Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a community update for September 19th, 2019. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so a lot to cover in this video. We had a you know news post come out about rebalancing a lot of champions. I will go over that. We also have a fusion event that's going to be starting soon-ish, and it's probably going to be some sort of you know Halloween-themed fusion that'll be like 25 days, kind of similar to the the Foley fusion where there'll be a lot of different stages. We've got a tournament coming up, an event coming up. We've got lots of you know offers coming through. And the shop I'll try to go over those here at the end and then we've also got this video posted on the raid Facebook if you haven't seen this I will go ahead and show it it's really quick it's like 15 seconds Alrighty, so that is basically showing, uh, you know, four characters being fused into a legendary, and it looks like a dwarf. So it looks like we're going to be getting a female legendary dwarf in the new fusion event that I expect to be starting somewhat soon, you know, probably within the next few days or so, I, I think, if they're teasing it this hard. And it looked like four epics because in that video they were all level 40. So it should be an exciting month to, uh, you know, have something epic to chase after and go after that legendary dwarf. I really hope that it's a really good legendary because the dwarves could really use some help. Alrighty, so let's go into the news post from today. And let's click on this. Um, I'm just nerdy enough to notice this, but oh, th you know, this is the first thing that jumped out to me. This is a pretty popular picture for Raid Shadow Legends. You, you see it on a lot of advertisements, and it, you know, you see it posted a lot. This picture of you know Elaine, Kale, Gaelic, and um, Aethel, they are the four starting champions. So you really see this picture a lot. And and look, Kale looks way different. And and I decided to go ahead and pull up the older version of this picture. And look at this. This is kind of interesting. Uh, we can see how Kale is very dark and like undead, dark elf, possessed looking, and everything is the same except for now all of a sudden he looks human. Uh, you know, besides his eyes are, are kind of on fire, but he's got you know nice white teeth and you know fair skin, uh, and his hair is is white, and he just looks way more dark in the bottom version. So I'm curious as to why they made that change. Maybe we're going to be getting a dark kale eventually. Maybe that's why they you know changed it like this. I always thought we might get like like a a heavenly kale or something, and and. And the original version was the dark version because he's a dark elf. But anyway, I don't know exactly why this changed or what's going on. It's just something that I kind of noticed that I wanted to throw in the video. Alrighty, so for this update, we've got a lot of balance changes coming through. I will try to go over them quickly so this video doesn't take up too much of your time. And just kind of let you know my first impressions. Altan added Aura skill. Increase ally defense in all battles by 33%. Altan has been pretty good in the last few weeks ever since his last kind of rework slash buff so this was kind of unnecessary but and you know Altan you know wasn't a god to your legendary so I'm okay with them making him just a little bit better and I'm always okay with them adding auras to people because it gives the player base a little bit more customization with their army comps especially now that we have faction wars but um, you know semi unnecessary I would have preferred they you know focus on legendaries that are in the bottom tier whereas whereas altan is already pretty good so kind of interesting there um angar now places a provoke debuff for two turns was one very needed uh skill three now each hit taken will decrease the damage by four percent up to 20 was two up to 10 definitely needed as well angar is nowhere near good enough to justify how rare he is to acquire so uh, i don't know if those changes are going to be good enough to make any significant difference in terms of like bringing him into the meta but at least it'll help uh Errol, it now has an extra 30 percent chance of inflicting a critical hit okay that's all right now steals one random buff from the target and has an extra 30 percent chance of inflicting a critical hit Okay, I, I remember, um, you know, I have to work during the day, but I, I, you know, just what was coming through my feed, it seemed like they messed up on Errol, and, um, 
they're ha they're having to like fix it or they accidentally nerfed him when they were supposed to buff him or something i don't really know exactly what was going on in terms of that but uh if anybody does know exactly what happened i'd love to hear uh you know what you have to say down in the comments but i remember hearing some stuff about that all right mountain king desperate need of buffs mountain king is is a very disappointing opening legendary for the dwarf faction so let's see what we got here changed base stats uh basically added 50 percent more hp to the base which you know that is a big deal adding to base stats is extremely huge because all of your artifacts are based off of your base and a lot of those you know end game stats are based off of percentages like that's why you want a chest that has percent hp instead of just flat hp because it's going to scale off of your base stat a lot better so you know the old mountain king if you had a plus 50 percent hp chest that chest would give you a bonus 10 percent or 10,000 hp well now that same chest is going to give you a bonus 15,000 hp instead of 10,000 so that's 5,000 hp right there off of one uh one gear slot so these base stat changes can really have a huge difference we've also got 80 res instead of 30 adding 50 resistance is a ton and uh, it, you know, it looks like they're kind of trying to slot the dwarves into being a very high resistance faction, which I'm okay with. I, I think dwarves should be pretty sturdy. But the, the thing I don't understand is going with 85 speed instead of 101. 85 is very low, especially for a legendary. I understand, you know, you don't want to overtune him or something, but it kind of seems unneeded. I don't, I don't think this was going to bring Mountain King into some sort of top of the meta situation. So... I don't really understand the change. Maybe if you took it from 101 to like 96 or something, but to go from 101 to 85 is very interesting and, and kind of unneeded there. No ROG. Now an 85% chance of placing a 50% decrease accuracy debuff. Okay, cool. Uh, damage now scales with defense. Great. Uh, now scale. Okay, so they just changed no ROG to kind of scale with defense. So, uh, you know, I totally agree with that. And I, I like that change. Turvald, now a 55% chance of placing a 25% weekend, was 30%. I am okay with that. Uh, Turvald is already a pretty decent legendary, so uh, this will make him just that little bit better. Valkyrie, increased damage. Uh, Valkyrie has been buffed for like three straight iterations of balance patches which i'm okay because she's kind of the leader of the barbarians and uh, i'm okay with her being a really good legendary but again i would have liked some of these changes to come through for some of the legendaries that have been bottom of the barrel since the release of the game so interesting but you know i'm okay with it as long as they would just focus on some of the terrible legendaries uh war chief now a 60 percent chance of placing a 50 percent decrease accuracy was 25 uh, that's good he's a legendary he should have a better chance i don't know if this will change him in any significant way but hey it's something now we're getting into epic heroes aina increased damage okay 80 percent for three turns and increased damage okay that's good now an 80% chance of placing it for three turns and increased damage. Okay, so I'm going to have to really take a look at Aina. I'll, I'll probably try to update my tier list after this. I'll do that like live on stream or something. I'll go through my tier list and, and kind of shuffle things around. I haven't seen anything that would really be game changing in terms of where I would rank somebody on a tier list. But this might slide Aina up the board pretty decently on the epic tier list. Aether. 40% chance of placing a provoke. That was very needed. Aether has been garbage tier for a long time. Uh, decreased cooldown. This was also needed. So Aether will now be less garbage. Uh, I, I I don't see this, uh, you know, making him into like a really good epic or anything. But, you know, he should, should help out a little bit. Uh, Cannon S. Decreased cooldown from 6 to 4 and from 4 to 2. After, okay, so that's good. Uh, you know... Most times, not always, but most times when these characters get into cooldowns of 6 and 7, it's just too big of a cooldown for them to have really good value anywhere but the arena. So this change is going to be good for Cannoness to, you know, bring her into a more decent, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A more decent place in the game in terms of being an epic. I don't know if it'll be super amazing until I dive in deeper, but I'm okay with that change. Uh, Infernal Baroness, damage on scales off defense. Okay, cool. I'm always 
uh, open to having more defense characters because, uh, you know, defense is generally a little bit better in the end game dungeons. So the more options we can have in the end game a little bit better. And we, we already have a ton of attack champions, it seems like. So uh, damage, skills off defense. Okay. Perfect veil for three turns was two. I'm okay with that. That's a good change. Necro Hunter. 50% chance of placing was 35. Okay, great. That's going to be a pretty good ability now. Tomb Stalker, 100% chance. Okay, awesome. So, Necro Hunter getting a needed buff, and, and this will probably slide him a little bit up the epic board. I'll have to take, uh, you know, a deeper look there. Grizzled Yarrow, yeah, again, they're going to be aiming towards making the uh, dwarves very sturdy in terms of resistance, which I'm okay with. Uh, you know, Grizzled Yarrow could have gotten even a little bit more help than this, but hey, it's a starting point. Jarang, increased damage, increased damage. Uh, Jarang has not been a very great epic, so I'm okay with that. That's good. Again, just resistance for Rockbreaker. Rockbreaker Rock Breaker could use a little bit more love than this, but okay. Soul Drinker, increased damage. Uh, great. Soul Drinker is kind of like a, a, a bomb-centric epic character, so this is good. Um, probably needs a little bit more love than this, but I'm okay with it. And then we've just got a bunch of Dwarven Rares getting 15 resistance added to their totals. Uh, you know, a lot of these could have used a little bit more love than that, but it's a start. And then it also says, some of the champions have changed a lot since the beginning of the game. And as such, the player reviews have no longer, uh, or have no longer... Oh, they no longer reflect those champions in their current state. Since they've had a makeover, we're going to give them a fresh start too. So we've reset the reviews section as well. Basically, they are resetting the in-game review system so that you can go through and, and reassess these champions after the balance changes. Uh, we've had a lot of feedback recently regarding the clan boss. <laughs> That's an understatement. In, par in particular, how the rewards were balanced. We listened and we think you're right. That's good. At least they're acknowledging so we've made some changes that we think you'll be more happy about. We've changed the rewards for the Ultra Nightmare boss, increased the chance of getting legendary tomes from transcendent chests, as well as the chance of getting legendary artifacts from all chests. Check out the forum for more details to see exactly what we've changed. Um, okay, so basically this is saying they're making Ultra Nightmare a little bit more worthwhile for endgame clans to attack. I wish they would have addressed the clan boss issues, you know, kind of, for the whole scale because you figure you know less than one percent of the player base is attacking ultra nightmare on a regular basis so i would have liked to see them kind of reshuffle things throughout the whole way to kind of help the whole player base out uh so an interesting decision there but hey at least they're making ultra a, a little bit better because you know currently the the rewards for ultra and for the super end game clans didn't seem to quite match up with the bump and challenge that it was compared to Nightmare. So, uh, all in all, a good starting point. But some of these things, you know, could have been done differently in my opinion. And hopefully, we will get another balance update within the next week or two. I I hope to see these coming out more and more often. I always suggest that to them. You know, uh, you know, the player base is always yearning for more balance updates and, and kind of things that shift the game around and keep it fresh and and give some of the, the trash to your champions some help. So hopefully that will be coming as we move down the line here. All right, and then a lot to cover here. We've got a tournament posted. That is going to be starting tomorrow, and it is a champion training tournament, which means as you rank up and level up your champions, you will be getting points towards a tournament that will have kind of a leaderboard. There are probably, I, I anticipate this to be like a month-long thing for both the event and the tournament to be something that leads all the way up to like Halloween weekend, something that goes a very long time similar to the Foley event. So this will be the tournament that probably has a regional smaller local leaderboard that also feeds into a global leaderboard where you can see your rank in terms of how active you are in training your champions. And then we're also going to have an event starting soon, a champion training event. And look at this. We've got a sacred shard, a legendary tome, and this champion is probably going to be one of the champions that feed into the legendary fusion. So if you're really active in this event, you are going to get some pretty good. I, I expect this to take a lot of points to complete because a sacred shard, a legendary tome, and that champion that's part of the fusion is going to be, um, that's a lot for them to give away. I haven't really seen them give rewards like that. So I anticipate this event to be very tough and take a lot of energy and effort. 
the artifact enhancement event has been going on for the last few days and seems very difficult um I've spent a lot on, you know, upgrading artifacts and stuff, and I'm only to here. I, I think for the amount I've spent, I should probably be, like, up here somewhere close to my epic skill tome. So it seems a little bit too difficult, but uh, all in all, at least the rewards are okay. Alrighty, and then just really quick to go over the current offers that are here on my sheet. We're getting this offer again, the uh, special skill pack, and... Um, this offer is okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. If you're, if you're in a spot where you're looking to spend money, this one's not bad. It's not something I would su super recommend, but it, you know, it falls in like that decent tier. The bonus offer pack is incredible. If you do, if you are looking to spend money, this pack is really good and you have a lot of time to think about it. You got still over three weeks and this is insane value. It's one of the best offers I've seen them put in the game. The wildcard accessories, I usually lean towards saying these aren't good enough to uh, justify unless you're like a super whale and you just summoned, you know, a, a champion of this faction, then maybe go ahead. But for most of us, I would say these are usually a pass. The greater XP brew pack is probably, again, a pass unless you're like a super whale or something. But generally, I don't think these ones are uh, super worth. But uh, the bonus offer pack is the best. And then after that would probably be this one here. Alrighty, so... That kind of covers it for everything that I wanted to, you know, go over for this community update. And uh, as always, let me know what you think down in the comments. Always enjoy hearing your input. And thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.